Well, hello. This is a 6900 XT, uh, big Navi GPU from ASRock. It's called the Phantom Gaming. I don't think it has any other numbers or anything after that. But the main reason I am doing a quick snippet on this is I couldn't actually find any uh, video record of this card actually existing yet. So since I was able to pick one up today, luckily, uh, I figured I'd go over just a little bit of a comparison between this and my reference 6900 XT from Gigabyte. Um, this card is significantly larger. The reference goes to about here. It's only about 75% as tall, and it's a little bit thinner, but it's almost the same thickness. They're almost the same weight, but both of these cards are extremely heavy. Um, much heavier than the Aorus Master RTX 3080 I have. Uh, I was a little bit different. This has three display ports and one HDMI 2.1. The other card has two display ports, one HDMI 2.1 and a USB-C uh, for VR and probably some future monitors. A change at the top you'll see on this card versus the reference is there, uh, yeah, sorry, there's another eight pin. So we have a total of three. This is actually, I think, in my opinion, the biggest difference in performance. My reference card tops out at 302 watts in Wattman. I don't know how accurate that actually is. I'm guessing it's fairly good, though. This card with the third one tops out at 323 watts. So that makes all the difference uh, in the in the benchmark runs that I've done. Um, I've mainly been using Synthetics, 3D Mark, and uh, Unigen. But this card, uh, by and large, is about... 9% faster than the reference stock versus this with the power limit turned up. That's it. Just the power limit turned up. Um, I can't actually crank the power limit on my reference card because it keeps overloading my power supply. Uh, long story, I've got one of these PCIe cables on it and it has the daisy chain end. For this test, I grabbed another cable and ran it to this card. So only after determining that and realizing what was going on, I need to go put this cable back in and run some more tests with the reference card. But before it was overclocked, it was still uh, running the GPU about 110 megahertz faster. Uh, the RAM was clocked exactly the same. However, you could just crank the slider all the way up on this. It didn't actually gain me any performance. So I'd recommend using your power budget on GPU overclocking versus uh, RAM overclocking. This has a single RGB fan and this plaque right here eliminates in RGB. There's a switch right here to disable that if you don't like it. There is a full length uh, back plate. Feels like it's aluminum. There's also another uh, support brace that attaches all the way back at the uh, PCIe um, header and then comes and actually mounts around on the board itself. As you can see, it's very densely packed with capacitors in there. A nice looking card from this angle, certainly. It's probably my favorite angle, so not good for a, a vertical mount in my opinion. It really doesn't look that great when it's on or even off. Lots of very chunky heat pipes. And you can actually see, if you look very carefully, um, really nicely centered, good thickness heat pads. There's actually thermal pads on the back side of the RAM as well. Um, there's direct thermal pads on top of the VRM, the, uh, both the, uh, the, the actual power stages and the, I think the inductors are what they're called. And then there's, again, pads on the back, and you can see it through and through. These look like really nice quality, and again, there was definitely care in assembling this thing. The actual mass of this cooler is extremely high, as I mentioned, so there, there's a lot of thermal mass most of the time this card's working in fan stop, but the new big Navi stuff doesn't operate on like a, well, if it's below 60 degrees, the fans are off. If it's above, they're on. It'll do that, but it will also turn them on if there's a GPU load. Uh, in addition to that, right there, there is an ARGB header. So if you want to plug in ARGB crap in your computer and your motherboard's too garbage to support it, you can do that. Um... And that's, that's pretty much it. So I am seeing, uh, for instance, in Time Spy Extreme, um, the best score, graphic score I got out of my 3080 Aorus versus the best score I got out of this was 
uh, about 16% faster for this. And that's, that's I think, a 1440 or a 4K benchmark. So that's really significant. And as you drop the resolution, these um, big Navi cards excel. Um, with my reference 6900, I found that the Aorus Master 3080 was actually doing a little bit better at 4K in a lot of titles, frame rate wise. But this has changed the tides. Granted, as you can see here, MSRP is $1,220.99. That's what I picked it up for. And <laughs> I never thought I'd be happy to pay MSRP, but right now, absolutely thrilled. Um, but I picked up my 3080 Aorus Master for $950, so that is a fair chunk cheaper, even though it is a decent bit slower. So I don't have a 3090 to test with. I didn't buy one because they're just too expensive in my opinion. But really, once you can actually buy GPUs, I still think this is a really good longevity play because it does have six additional gigabytes of VRAM over the 3080. It is a fair bit faster, and it's still, like, realistically, you're not going to get an MSRP 3090. So it's realistically $500 cheaper than a 3090. So this card, a lot of people don't recommend the 6900 XT because of the 6800 XT, and I totally get that, and I think that's a great card too. But the AIB 6900 XT, I think, will change a lot of minds because it is a lot faster than the reference card just because it is allowed to uh, consume a higher power budget. And I really feel like the two 8-pins are just right on the edge of strangling the reference card. So that's all my opinion, but there's a quick overview of the ASRock Phantom Gaming RX 6900 XT. Hopefully this helps you get a better idea um, about this card if you're looking at it. Again, I can only find one new egg review that was actually legitimate, and that was it. No YouTube videos, no nothing. So thanks for watching. I certainly do appreciate it. Um, and yeah, let me know if there's something specific you want to see done with this card. It's probably going to go into a personal system, but we'll see. Peace out. Quick follow-up. This is with the power limit upped in Wattman on the reference card. So 19,282, and the best I saw was 19,469 with the Azrock in the same machine. So after saying that, if you want a silent card or something you can't hear and get the most performance out of, I'd probably go with that Azrock AIB. Other than that, if you can find a reference, Go ahead and get one of those, because apparently it's about the same performance. So I'm going to run the 4K one just to confirm this, but it's pretty good. Okay, so it is still worth getting the higher power target card. This did a 9333 graphics, and the other card did a 9441. So that's definitely not nothing. That's, that's meaningful frame rates. Um... So that did a 9,072 overall, and this did 9,002. It is worth mentioning that the stock score of this card is 8881 graphics. So that gives you a good uh, baseline for what a 6900 XT, any 6900 XT should be doing stock. So pretty significant come up. It seems like they will all do it. Um, they're all pretty well binned parts, it seems like worth hopping in and upping the power limit though it doesn't seem to have any drawback to performance and they seem pretty stable adding a second non daisy chain 8 pin solved all the uh, power down issues so if you're having weird problems with your big navi card or even your uh, ampere card just make sure you're not using the daisy chain cables and you should be fine